Hi! In this screencast, we'll learn how to calibrate an ordinary monocular camera to obtain its intrinsic parameters and eliminate radial distortions on its images. Let's take this image for example. It was shot by some ordinary camera and as we can see, it does have its flaws. For example, the straight lines near the edge don't appear straight on the image. This effect is known as radial distortion and it's common for most of the consumer cameras out there. So what we want is to convert it to something like the image above, undistorted, so to speak. For this we'll have to talk about a pinhole camera model a bit, the most common one in computer vision. The reason it's so widely used is because it models most of the consumer cameras quite well. So how do we convert the coordinates of points in world space to image space under that model? The idea is pretty simple. We draw straight lines from camera optical center to objects in space and project them onto an image plane in front of the camera. Mathematically, it works like this. We take the coordinates in world space, convert them to camera space, and then we project it onto the image plane, multiplying by the camera intrinsic matrix. The same operation can also be written like this. In a perfect world, that would be it. But the lenses used in common cameras introduce such non-linearities as radial distortion as we saw previously. So we need to update our model to account for that. We do this by introducing nonlinear members in the equation. This way, the position of each point will also depend on how far it is located from the optical center. Ok, now we have the model. But the question is, how do we obtain all of its parameters for a given camera? Obviously, each camera is individual in that regard, since it's too difficult to guarantee the perfect shape and positioning of the lenses. Let's see how it's done in OpenCV. Here we have an application that simply reads and displays images. We'll use the same images that are used in OpenCV calibration sample. Let's have a look at them. We can see several images with a chessboard pattern in different positions in front of the camera. It has 9 by 6 inner corners. Now let's try to detect it. Corners image vector will store the positions of the inner corners on a single image. Points image vector will store all the image corners vectors. And will also store the pattern signs in a variable. Then we convert the image to grayscale and call find chessboard corners. It returns true on success, in which case we draw the corners on the original image and push it to image points vector. Let's see what we've got. Good, the corners are detected properly. Now we have the positions of the corners on several images. Since the pattern is planar and has a very simple structure, we can easily set its world space coordinates. Let's do this. By analogy, we'll store the positions of inner corners in corners world of vector. We'll push 9 by 6 elements there. Each element is the coordinate of the respective inner corner of the pattern in world space. World space will be associated with the board itself here. The plane of the board is the plane with third coordinate equal to 0. The very first corner is the origin and the two axes are aligned with the edges of the board. The unit distance will be equal to the size of the square. And since we use the same pattern on every image, we'll use the same world coordinates for each one of them. Ok, now let's recap what we have. First of all, we have the coordinates of the pattern corners in the world space. Also. We have the corresponding coordinates of those corners and image space. As was described previously, the relation between the two can be expressed with an equation containing multiple variables – focal length, principal point, rotation and translation matrices, and distortion coefficients. So we can construct an optimization problem that will find those parameters such that the difference between the found positions of the corners on the images and the positions evaluated using the camera model will be as small as possible. Calibrate camera function will do this for us. We'll create variables for the output parameters, 
camera matrix and distortion coefficients, as well as rotation and translation matrices. And then call calibrate camera method. We provided the points in the world and image space, then image resolution and the variables for output parameters. It returns the mean reprojection error, which can be used to evaluate overall calibration quality. Okay, now the camera is calibrated and we can use the evaluated parameters to undistort its images. For this, we call the undistort method, provided input and output matrices, the camera matrix and distortion coefficients. And now we can see the result. Here we go through the input images and after the calibration is done, we see the original and undistorted versions of the image. As expected, all the straight lines appear straight. And if we look at the reprojection error, we'll see that it's about half of a pixel, which is a decent result. As you can see, the technical part of calibrating the camera is pretty straightforward and there's not much room for variation there. So the secret of a good calibration is actually in choosing a good image sequence for calibration. For this, we have the following recommendations. Preferably, use the asymmetric circles grid as a pattern instead of the chessboard one. Gather the images where it is located in every part of the image, both horizontally and vertically. Shoot it from close and far distances, especially close ones. Rotate it around the diagonals. If you follow those recommendations, you will easily be getting accurate results. Good luck!